Artists are always talking about light. You can spend years studying light and its effect on color, form, shadow, edges, and so on. But if you're looking for some basic rules that you can apply right now, stay with me. In this video, I'll simplify this complex topic into a few basic concepts that will change the way you observe, draw, and paint things. I'll demonstrate each idea using a simple egg. What makes an object or a drawing look three-dimensional? What gives it weight, depth, and substance? Obviously, it's the play of light and shadow. An oval like this is flat. Add some shading to it and it becomes an egg. The first thing we need to ask ourselves is, where is the light coming from? Is it the sun, a lamp, a window? Is there just one light source or maybe more than one? Like a lamp on one side and a window on the other side. The direction from which the light is coming and the way it hits the object will help us determine how to place our highlights and our shadows. Let's look at this egg. If the light is coming from above, then the shadow will fall directly below the egg. If the light is coming from the side, then the shadow falls in the same direction as the light is coming from. This may seem obvious, and it is, when you have just one object and one source of light. But if you're drawing a scene with many different objects, you'll want to make sure you've identified your light sources so that all the shadows in your picture will be accurate and make sense. One other thing to keep in mind is how strong your light is. The stronger your light, the darker and sharper your shadows will be. When the light is weak or diffused, the shadows will be less intense and softer. Now let's talk about the areas of light and shadow themselves. The brightest area of the egg, where the light shines, is called the highlight. The dark side, where the light doesn't reach, is called the core shadow. And there's an in-between area called the midtone or the halftone. Now, when I put my egg down on the white paper, I get a cast shadow, which is the shadow that the egg is casting onto the paper. You can still see the highlight, the core shadow, and the midtone. And something else really fascinating happens. A rim of light appears on the shadow side of the egg. You can see that when I lift it up, that rim of light disappears. And when I put it back down, there it is. This amazing phenomenon happens because light actually reflects off of things and bounces around. The light is hitting the white paper and then bouncing up onto the shadowed side of the egg where it is reflected. That rim of light within the shadow is called reflected light. Amazing! Once you're familiar with all these different areas of light and shadow, you'll start to see them everywhere. Let's take these lemons with the light coming in from the right. We have a highlight. You have a mid-tone, there's the core shadow, and where the darkest part of the shadow should be, we see the reflected light, and the cast shadows on the table. Let's take a look at this little girl. We see the light source is coming in from the left. We can tell that because her head is casting a shadow onto her neck that goes in the direction the light source is pointing. Now we can see the highlight on that side of her face, a little highlight on the nose too, we can see the mid-tone, the core shadow, and there, in the darkest part of the core shadow, we also have the reflected light. And that's the cast shadow there. If you've ever gone shopping for light bulbs, you know that light can be different colors or temperatures, yellow or blue, warm or cool. The same is true of other light sources. The sun casts a warm yellow light, and your computer screen emits a cool blue light. Fluorescent lights can cast all sorts of different colors. Here, for example, is a picture of our egg in a warm light, and here's our egg in a cool light. Now here's something that might surprise you. Not only does the temperature of the light change the perceived color of the egg, but sometimes it even influences the color of the shadow, too. Let's go outside on a sunny day. Sunlight is warm golden. If we put our egg down on a white paper, we'll see the color of the shadow is a lovely cool blue. This photo is a great example of the same principle. You can see the warm golden light on the girl's face. Then take a look at her shadow. Look what a cool blue it is compared to the warm yellow light on the wall. Here's a general rule about shadows. Warm light casts a cool shadow and cool light casts a warm shadow. 
It's kind of crazy, isn't it? This rule doesn't always work, but often it does, and it's really fascinating to see it in action. Finding situations where you can see warm light and cool shadows is pretty common, but finding situations where you see a cool light casting a warm shadow is a bit more tricky. You can try setting something up like this. This lamp has two bulbs in it. One is warm and one is cool. I know it's hard to tell from this photo, but trust me on that. Here we've got the lights shining on our egg. And this is what the egg looks like with both of the lights, the warm and the cool, shining on it. Here's what happens when I turn off the cool light. So you can see it's very warm. And here's what happens when I turn on just the cool light. So both the paper and the egg now have the cool blue cast to it. Let's put both lights back on and take a look at the shadows now. Each light casts its own shadow onto the paper. You can see that one shadow has a cool bluish color and the other shadow has a warm orangey color. And where they overlap in the middle is kind of like a brownish gray because two colors on opposite sides of the color wheel, blue and orange, neutralize each other. So you've got kind of just a neutral brown in the middle there. Anyway, one of those lights is casting a warm shadow and the other light is casting a cool shadow. But which one is casting which? When I flip this light switches on and off, we don't see the colors of the shadow anymore. They both look brown but we can see the shapes that are left behind, so we know which shadow is being cast by which light. When we turn on the warm light, look closely at which shadow remains. And when we turn on the cool light, watch again to see which of the shadows is remaining. Warm light, cool shadow. Cool light, warm shadow. Remember we talked about light hitting surfaces and bouncing around? All this bouncing and reflecting light means that colors are bouncing around and being reflected too. Watch this. I'm going to take this red paper and hold it up next to my egg. The light coming in from the left is bouncing off the red paper and reflecting onto my egg. It's changing the color of the egg and the color of the shadow. We can try that with any color paper. If you're getting tired of looking at eggs, I don't blame you. Let's look at something else that's white. Here we've got a picture of a white cat in a green background, and you can see an interesting reflection on the cat's tummy there. It's kind of a yellowish green color. Now let's take a look at this cat sitting in a warm colored basket, and you can see the warm reddish brown color reflecting on that cat's fur. And this cat's got something purple reflecting on his fur. So what can we learn from all of this? I'd say, don't ever paint your shadows with just a gray. Shadows can be some of the most exciting parts of your artwork, so make those shadow areas as colorful and as fun as possible. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, you'll really like my video on color theory for artists. Check it out in the link below. Please leave me a like, a comment, and subscribe. Have a good one.